16 days starts now. So much anticipation for this trip, months, so much preparation, and I've been waiting for this moment. Up until this point, it's kind of like anxious energy. You're worried you're gonna forget stuff. But now we're here, we have what we have, yep. and we're gone. Quetico is a world-class fishing destination, so we are extremely excited for that. That's maybe the thing we're most excited for on this trip. But also, 16 days together alone. You can see anyone, the park is closed uh, from the American side because of COVID, so it's gonna be extra quiet since 90% of Quetico's guests are, are normally American. So it's gonna be a really special trip. Oh boy, oh, there he goes. That was fun. Just two and a half pounds, maybe. Yeah. Felt good. There we go. Oops. Grabbing the line is not a good way to hold on to a fish, as you can see, but the intention there is to release it, so. So we've been busy over the last few weeks dehydrating stuff. We've got burrito mix here. And we have to measure it all carefully on this trip. Can't be estimating it and end up with nothing at the end of the trip. So we have a measuring cup to make sure we, uh, we ration it. And it is a... Oh, it might be a nice walleye actually. Yeah, yeah it is, yeah it is. Oh yeah. That's a nice walleye. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just got it, hooks all out. All right. Right on. Worth netting, for yeah. sure. There it nice. is. Start. Portage number two. We are packed for a single carry, but the food barrel is just too heavy right now. Once we lighten that up in a few days, hopefully we can start single carrying. I can't believe the size of the swells here. Like it's very windy, but it's not ferocious. And this isn't the big lake. Just keep us straight. This is a huge pine. It's just, it's amazing. Let's see these ancient giants. Leaning over the portage too. When that falls someday, that's gonna be a Heck of a job to clear. <laughs> I want them to call me so I can harvest it for, <laughs> for our dining room table. <laughs> Into Twin Lakes. It's a pretty nice one. I like this lake. It's coming down now. Yep. I hope it doesn't start uh, lightning. Yeah. Lightninging. Okay, camp number one, Blueberry Island on Sturgeon Lake. This campsite has been burned, on this half at least, but the northern half of the island's still okay. Feels good. Yeah, it feels really nice. We're pretty soaked, and it was actually getting pretty cold with the wind and the wetness. This is nice. Yeah, nothing better than just being able to get a good fire going and create some warmth. Mm -hmm. So start getting that chill. This is a really nice site. Covered in pine needles, nice and open, but well treed still. I'm already starting to feel like I'm getting in my groove now that we're setting up camp. A sip of scotch might have helped with that. It's really nasty and gray and windy on that side. And then here we got the sun going down. Be a good evening. Mm -hmm. We've got penne, 
with sausage pieces. We uh, cooked Italian sausages, broke them up into small pieces and dehydrated them. And then spinach, uh, grape tomatoes, both dehydrated, and Parmesan cheese and dehydrated tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. How was it? It's fantastic. Good. Mmm. This is great. This is great. Mm. Very good meal. Sunset. Relaxed. Mm -hmm. Drying off. Wonderful. Foot check for ticks. Mm -hmm. Met up with Kevin Callen before the trip and he said make sure you check yourself head to toe. Oh, it feels good to have wet stuff Air off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's always a great feeling. Beautiful morning here. It looks like we're gonna have a tailwind again based on the current direction. Aaron woke up early and made me oats, made us oats. Super sweet. Uh, and this was a perfect first night to start our trip. Wonderful campsite. It's a skinny, long enough little island. Views all around. It's been fantastic. We got day two started here. We got a fantastic tailwind. The lake is really chopped up out there. It's really nice. We're going with it. And we're in a bit of a sheltered area here. Out on the, on the main lake, it's, it's white capping. <laughs> One of the luxuries we chose for this trip to bring was a big one kilogram bag of peanut M&Ms. They're heavy, but they're so worth it. Mm -hmm. So good. We got pesto coming up. Mm -hmm. We didn't dehydrate this, so we're going to eat it up earlier in the trip. There's a whole bunch of bones on this site that we don't recognize. I have no idea, but it's interesting. They're all really serrated around the edge, but see, these ones are together. It's weird. Here, look at this piece. Is it a shell? A shell? Be a big of a turtle? turtle. Maybe. Nice. That's an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. That'd be a big turtle. Yeah. Chatterton Falls over there. That's where we're heading next, Chatterton Lake. A little walleye. I was looking for one like this to eat before lunch, but it didn't get didn't happen. Not gonna stop and cook now. Everyone just check this out to make sure it's the trail. Trails, portages, and campsites are not marked in this park, uh, just to maintain that sense of wilderness. We're going upstream in the Malayan River right now, for, uh, and tomorrow as well. So lots of climbing on the ports, but nice open portages. Tall one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Pretty 
get small efficient here. Thank you. Nice lake. Yeah. Keats. Keats Lake. I feel like maybe because of the time of day we should take the one port. Yeah. Cover some ground. We got three ports left. This is the Hava Smoke Portage. We're not really sure what that means. We asked a group back there, does that mean it's hard or easy, like have a smoke break, or you're gonna wanna have a smoke after it? And they were just like, oh, you know, have a smoke. We were like, oh, okay, gotcha. We had no idea what they meant. So far, it's good though. Beautiful. Well, we stopped here on Shelly Lake. Just getting to dinner time. We didn't want to make it a late one. Pretty cool lake, actually. Nice sight. Hi. Nice red pine for hanging hammocks. Little island, benches, fire pit. Pretty good. Oh yeah. This is one of our favorites. Dehydrated pineapple. Can't be beat. No, it tastes so good. And this is uh, two or three pineapples. Got a great view from my hammock tonight. We go, might go without the fly. It's not supposed to rain. Though our, we won't have a forecast our whole, the whole time, so it's going to get less and less accurate. Love these Amok Drommer hammocks, so comfortable. That's our water filter. And then Aaron's going to be a little far away from me tonight, over there. This is a huge amount of food. <laughs> We were hoping for a blueberry feast here at the beginning of August. It's been a famine. Pickens are slim. Cheers. These are the third and fourth <laughs> blueberries we've had. Not a good year for blueberries here. Mm -hmm. Dry, but, I think. But no bugs. Yeah. Hardly any bugs, except bugs. early morning, late evening. But during the day, it's been beautiful. Yeah. This is heavier than any fish we caught today. That is a bucket of curry. That's several pounds. Mm. <laughs> Dying to put my feet up. My my dogs are barking. Oh yeah. Oh man, yes. I've been saving this book for this trip. And that's why. I had my wet shoes and socks drying here and look what was inside of this sock. It's shelob. 
That's a beefy spider. Another great campsite on that island. Two for two so far. It's a small smolly. Not too bad. First one of the day. Gentle, gentle. Really slow, slow. Watch for rocks here, hun. Yeah, I think there's rocks on the top that are probably too red for the flying ball. You want a port? Or if we can get in that, I don't know. Do you think we can? Make sure we don't turn here, eh? Yeah. We catch a rock as we turn, and we'll flip. Paddling upstream on the Malayan River still today and possibly tomorrow as well. This is Shelly Lake, but the Malayan River runs through it along with many other lakes. So there's a good amount of current, but uh, this has become one of our, my favorite lakes. I think I might like it even more than Russell. There seems to be a lot of recency bias in that because every new lake we see kind of becomes my favorite, but this one is all arms and bays. It's not one big open blob, which is my least favorite. Beautiful lake. So rude. <laughs> Double hatter. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad, bass. Not bad. Now yeah, that's a she lob. What a beast. Ugh. Ugh, think of me the jeebies. I hate spiders that look like they have the potential to jump. Another double header here. I got myself a medium sized slime trout. Oh. Decent bass for me. It's interesting, they both hit around the same spot. Yeah. Just a bass and a pike hanging out. Fox and the hound. So the portages and campsites are not signed in Quetico to maintain that sense of natural wilderness. Uh, and this is the first one where we're, we don't see any kind of a portage. It's short, thankfully. Just have to get around a rapid. You would think over the years there'd be an obvious defined trail. <laughs> so pretty. one yet. Still not that big. Three, three plus maybe. Kaunippi is one of the biggest lakes on our route. We have about 25 kilometers of paddling just to get across it to our next portage. And we've got a beautiful tailwind again today. Third straight day, beautiful north wind. And it's not too strong either. Sometimes a tailwind can actually be too strong and it chops up the lake. This is just perfect. Ready? This lake really is huge. We're in this uh, southern bay of Kaunepi. The whole southern half of Kaunepi Lake is a burn, an old burn probably 10 or 15 years ago. It's all even aged and it's dense as anything. So we, we've actually only found one campsite on this entire like, 20 kilometers of paddling. It's the only one we've noticed. Other than that, it's all been too rocky or too thick with uh, the, the regeneration of trees. There go the swans. In the distance over there, there's a waterfall that's going to be roaring. We were hoping not to have to camp by it, and thankfully we just found something. Again, everything has been so bushy from the forest fire. 
But we found a good spot here that got spared a little bit, some trees left. And there's an actual campsite here. Sweet. The forest fire regeneration is so thick, we were thinking, can big mammals still get through there? Evidently they can. I'm baking bannock over the fire tonight. We've got the flour, baking powder, and uh, salt mixed in before we left. I've got some lard to add. I'm just shaping them into biscuits. And then I use my spoon fork to poke some holes through them. Just It helps them cook all the way through a little bit better. Want a treat out here? Yeah. Fresh biscuit. Oh wow. Beautiful evening, nice sunset. The lake is glass out there. We were pretty tired, but we couldn't resist coming out. Conditions were just too good. There's an eagle just right up in a tree over there. It's been watching us fish all evening. Probably looking at us thinking a bunch of amateurs. This tree is covered in spiderwebs, like every needle. So we're at the end of Kanepi Lake at Kennebaz Falls and we have the choice of either doing the falls chain which is five portages to get into McEwen or just one 1100 meter port to get into McEwen. We're going to take the 111. Um, we've seen quite a few falls already and we have more to come so uh, we're just going to save ourselves the trouble of all those short ports. It's a beautiful morning. I think it's our most beautiful yet. Oh my goodness, here come the swans. <laughs> <laughs> here come the swans. 
love the swans! Watch out! Don't hide your children! I'm just pooped. <laughs> As I was saying, it's been a beautiful morning. That's the second time they've at our site they flew right past us too like this just out of the mist and it was absolutely stunning um yeah i'm surprised there's swans here but there are they're pretty neat anyway yeah just stunning morning lots of lots of fog and it's just starting to burn off and uh, look at this lake yeah it looks unreal it's so beautiful this morning yeah it's been a really stunning morning a bunny hopped through our site this morning <laughs> Are we eating oats? Mm-hmm. Really good one. There's even a spider web there. <laughs> There's even a spider web out here. How did it get there? In the middle of the lake. <laughs> nice. totally quiet here on Kenny Lake. We didn't see anyone yesterday either paddling all the way across Kaunepi. We saw eight or nine boats parties in the first two days and I think it's gonna be pretty quiet from here on out. Biggest one yet. Can you put your arms around it? See what that does? <laughs> Not much. Wow. And then a huge birch there too. Mm -hmm. Good soil. Yeah. This is huge. I know. Look how deep the bark is. Yeah. That's oh, amazing. I love these ancient trees. Mm-hmm. This port to McEwen is a constant incline. And one map said 11.16, the other said 12.70. We're like on top of the hill here. A wasp? Yeah. Uh-oh. Okay, let's go. There's a big down tree here. Hasn't been cleared yet. And there's a wasp nest right there on that birch. There's several on it. Just scoot right past that, thank you. I've disturbed a, a hive before on a portage and it, it's kind of scary. <laughs> there she is. It's looking like it's gonna be a beautiful lake from here. Nice red pine. This incline's wicked steep. John's just pulling the boat up there like it's nothing. Shoulders are burning. Oh, that feels good. Yeah. Oh. I'm an alligator. <laughs> I'm like, it's actually cold now. Oh. It's nice up here. Mm -hmm. 
I don't have to make any decisions or pay attention. Yep. Just look, look around. Daydream. Like I like having control back there too. Yeah. But this is nice as well. I like both. Yeah, it's a nice switch up for us. Both of us. Yeah. How do you feel back there? I like it. Yeah. Hi you. There was a big rock shelf there. We got three hits there. Chunky little football. Chunky little football. Nice. I think that's probably my biggest one of the trip so far. Yep. I'm gonna throw them back in. Oh, which way is easiest? Ow! <laughs> Clamp down on my finger. <laughs> there he goes. Hydrating frat boy style. <laughs> McEwen mm -hmm. Lake is again one of our favorites. The recency bias mm -hmm. uh, keeps coming back. Uh, we love to camp here. Probably huge lake trout in this lake. Seems like it's not visited too often. Have it to ourselves right now, as far as we can tell. But we got to keep going. Every lake's our favorite lake. Yeah, there have been a few. This one is really beautiful yeah, though. Like, beautiful. And, and the day is beautiful, but this is a deep, clear water lake. So quiet and peaceful today, it's really calm. Mm -hmm. I got a good fish on. Oh, oh, it's a big pike. Is it? Oh my goodness, you see it? It's right here. Oh yeah. Wow, that wasn't what I was expecting. It's got this small lure just in the corner of its mouth, thankfully. Okay, you ready? Yep. Scoop it head first. Okay. Look at that brute. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. nope, nope, nope. Are you confident in the net? Yeah. Okay. This is probably the third big fish that has hit. One broke my line and one popped the hook. So this will be satisfying. Here we go. Nope, 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 leave it. Went on some huge runs before I turned the camera on too. Look at that. Who says pike don't fight? This has been a battle. We, we don't uh, turn on the camera too early because we can't afford the battery power. Oh yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I'm confident in the hook. It's right in the corner of the mouth. It's a hard place for them to to shake it. And with, a, with the weight of a big fish like this, it's uh, a bit easier to keep them the rod bent. Okay, this one could be it. Oh, shoot. Got it. Take that tail in. Nice. Good job, hon. Got it. Good job. Woohoo! Yeah! That's a mini one! Oh my goodness! Alright, we got super view on, we're gonna need it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, make this quick. Oh yeah! Oh. That's a thick pike. Okay, that's good. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. My compliments to the net woman. How big do you think that was on the sound? Uh, at least 10 pounds. I do this all the time. I use big lures to catch big fish. Most of the big fish that I catch are on smaller lures. Look at this little um, shad imitation. Just a small crankbait, two barbless hooks. Luckily that pike didn't inhale it because he probably would have bit me off. I've got 20 pound fluorocarbon here, which has held up to a lot of big pike's teeth for me, but Never know, with a bait that small, it's pretty easy for the line to get right in their teeth. And that was a toothy pike too. We've got several kilometers to go down McEwen Creek here. Hopefully the water is high enough or this could be a really long go. Do it 
this the first new? No. <laughs> Beautiful in this creek. There's plenty of water. Feels kind of lost. I'm really loving Quetico right now. It really is a great wilderness. Uh, nope. That's not it. <laughs> For some reason planning this trip, I was excited for this next lake, Glacier Lake. Maybe it just has a nice name. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like another butte. We're paddling around Glacier Lake. We've pretty much done the whole circumference of the lake looking for a site. No luck. On the plus side, we've got to see most of the lake. On the downside, we have nowhere to sleep tonight. Yet. So finishing our day at five o'clock on Glacier Lake turned into uh, seven kilometers of paddling around Glacier to find no campsite. And then we're now on the fourth portage after that short one here, uh, trying to find a campsite, nothing. Finally made camp, just losing the sun. Good fire pit, not too good of access, but pretty nice view. And we'll get the hammocks up in there. How you doing? Good. And you? Good. Good. Mm -hmm. We earned this one. It's a 12 hour day, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. A uh, great day until the evening when then it got a little, a little hairy, but nothing too bad. Could be storming, could be windy. It's a nice evening, so mm -hmm. we got we got a campsite. We're good, and we put a dent in tomorrow's work. Yeah, exactly. So now tomorrow, we're gonna stop on the, a lake trout lake and hopefully make tonight's lake trout dinner dreams come true. <laughs> mm. Tastes pretty good tonight. Mm-hmm. I thought we had the flavor of this park figured out. Mm -hmm. It seemed like Algonquin-esque, but unmarked um, campsites and mm -hmm. portages. Yesterday was a bit of a transition where mm -hmm. it was kind of like getting a bit more wild. And today feels more like a woodland caribou or mm -hmm. a wabakimi. This park has some wild corners, mm -hmm. that's for sure. No, there were times today where it felt like we weren't in the park. Mm -hmm. And by that I mean most of the day. Yeah. Barely see a campsite. Mm -hmm. Last two days we've barely seen a campsite. Mm -hmm. There are campsites. We can barely see them. <laughs> yeah. We're just getting on the water, it's just before 8, and we're heading to Louisa Lake, which is six portages away, but not a ton of distance. And they're all short ports, so we're hoping to be there early afternoon and have some time to uh, enjoy the afternoon at our site. Maybe do some laundry if we're lucky. First largemouth bass of the trip. Not a big one, but it's been all smallies, so many smallies. <clears throat> Pretty good smallie on Rod Lake. Lake 
are we on? Duma? Mm -hmm. Duma? Coming through Falquier Lake. Oh, came off. We're both pretty gassed. Erin's also got something going on with her stomach, so that's it's pretty concerning. We're on day five out of 16, so hopefully we're gonna rest this afternoon. Oh. Snag. Hopefully we'll rest this afternoon and uh, and feel better tomorrow. on the map. Oh yeah. Nice wetland here. Pitcher plants. Our plake has pretty turquoise water. And it's the last one before Louisa finally. That looks good. Wow. That's what we need right now. Oh yes. my goodness. I'm jumping in here when we're done. Same. Second load, and then wow. we're, we're going for a dip. Add some morale booster. Within a few minutes, Aaron just hooked into a small lake trout, which would have been perfect for lunch, exactly what we wanted. Got off right at the boat. Passed by a site on a little point that we couldn't resist. Beautiful view both ways. Really nice little camping area for two hammocks. And reasonable water access down here. We had a big lunch at after three o'clock, so we're just doing deluxe mashed potatoes tonight, rehydrated shallots and chanterelle mushrooms. Thank you, Barb. And there, just adding the potatoes and we'll add cheese, sriracha, and pepper as well. How do you feel? Just oh, got off. No. Just before we saw it. Two lost at the boat. Oh. Did you see if it was a lake trout? I think it probably was though, by the way it dove right down. Yeah, Damn. considering we're jigging deep. Yeah. Hey, hon. The wind's kicking up already. We gotta pack up and get out of here. Here. Spectacular morning here. I woke up looking right at the sun, like down the barrel of a shotgun. Uh, and the, w the window's already up a little bit, a south wind. 
Ran out of battery there. Um, normally I would have changed the battery before starting a shot like that, but uh, we're using every one to the last drop. We've got 10 action cam batteries and nine for the big camera. And so far we're rationing them okay, but it's a constant challenge. Um, yeah, so once we get to Agnes Lake, we head north and we can use this wind to our advantage. So should be great. Pictographs on the Agnes too. It's gonna be an excellent day. Another beautiful sunny day, hardly not a cloud right now. We're on the water just before 7 a.m. Skipped breakfast, we're gonna have it at the other end of the lake before the wind kicks up. And we got, uh, I think, six or so kilometers on this lake. just made it to the end of Louisa Lake and we're gonna stop and have some breakfast now. We're at the top of the falls, yep. bottom of the falls. Top of the falls. We're at the top of the falls. And, uh, really exciting waterfall. We're excited to see the fall. That's good. We are at the top of Louisa Falls, and just from here you can see the big drop from here to the next lake. Okay, we're about to see Louisa Falls. There's a bathtub halfway down that we're gonna clean ourselves up in. I'm looking forward to seeing it from the bottom. Beautiful though. It's gonna be a steep portage. I'm happy we're going down. I know. one of the highlights for sure. That was so awesome. We've got a great tailwind here on Agnes Lake and we've had one for probably three quarters of our travels so far along with incredible weather. It's all just unheard of and pretty good bugs. Just in the late evening, early morning but then they go away pretty much fully. Amazing.
Is it? Is it a trout? It looks like it's doing belly rolls. Oh, maybe, yeah, it's a laker. Nice laker. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, I got the net ready. Oh, oh no, goodness. it's a pike. It's oh, a decent it's pike. Look like a lake. It's good. It would have been a big lake. Yeah, it would have been. Five o'clock now, and we're into Silence Lake, looking for a campsite. We're gonna stay on Agnes, the last one, but nothing shouted out to us. So hopefully something does here. Oh my goodness, that looks like easily, a shark. Easily fit my hand inside of this pike's jaw. Oh my lordy, that's a big one. Look at the top teeth on it. Look at the gripping teeth. That is what keeps any prey from escaping. That's... Because they, they face backward too, so as soon as they get something, there's no letting go. Wild. Oh, they're so sharp. Don't touch. Don't. <laughs> Careful. The pike's teeth are really sharp. These ones are probably a little worn down, but... Oops, still pretty sharp. And then... Oh. Looks like this is the spine here. That's impressive. Yeah. I really want to go fishing right now. Yeah. <laughs> nice little sight. Yeah. I like it actually. Yeah, it is nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> there he is, there he is. He's on the rock. He's on the rock. The rock right there, the big rock, he's on top of it. Oh my goodness, I see him. Oh my goodness, he's huge. There you are. Hi. I just heard a turtle breathe. His nostrils were above water and we could hear him. Nasally. He's nasally. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. It just seems like a lot of extra to go down and then... So let's add up what we have to do left and see if we mm -hmm. can afford the time. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah sounds good. Alright. If we have the, again, if we can afford the time and still be leisurely, then I'm happy to do it. Yep. We got one night left of scotch after this. I found this, I saw it bobbing by shore and reached in and picked it up. It's called a Wally Diver, it says on the lip. And it had some pretty rusty hooks, so I just replaced the one with one with pinched barbs and only double. And I'm gonna give it a try and see if it brings anything in for us. Stay tuned. Everyone's checking us out. Hello. Give us a splash, come on! Hey! No, I doesn't care. <laughs> hey, I'm talking to you! Hey! <laughs> wow, unfazed. Very tame critters here on Silence Lake. Yeah. Okay. Hola. We're, hola. We're off to bed. It's uh, 8, 8, 8 p.m. But we're just going to get a good early start tomorrow. You would think that Aaron and I would share a, a tent to minimize bulk and weight on a trip. And we thought about that, but uh, I, I get a bad back if I sleep in a tent too long, too many nights. 
but also we we spend every second of the day together paddle the same canoe we eat out of the same dish it's it's good to have a little personal space a little sprawl space here to call your own at the end of the night if the other person's waking up to pee you don't necessarily have to wake up so it's a really nice thing for couples too Hey, hon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is nice. And you don't have to smell my stinky feet. <laughs> On the water just after 7 a.m. this morning, Erin's going with her new Wally diver. And I'm just going to go with... Little old red and white spoon. We're on Summer Lake. We've got two portages down and seven to go on the day. Just rolling up to our third. Five loons here. Noon Lake, yeah. <laughs> Loons on noon. Oh, going for a run. We got the net ready here. There he is. Come on. All of you. There you go. That's not bad. Another decent sized one. It's, a, it's pretty meaty, actually. Yeah. Not a huge head on it, but pretty good body. Yeah in the water, the slimer. Gave a decent fight. Doing pasta with sausages again today. But these are noodles I've never tried before. They're egg noodles. They, they're kind of like mini gnocchi. Mm -hmm. That's what they taste and feel like. A little chewy, good. Yeah, I quite like them. It's a nice mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting for this to happen forever. I caught a smallmouth bass and a pike, a good sized pike came and slammed it. Get the net, get the net. Look at this. Oh my goodness, this is poor bass. It's poor bass. Oh. And now, oh, ah! oh, bass is in the boat. Can you grab that bass? Poor bass. Oh man, we didn't have the camera going. Did you? Yep. Good. <laughs> That was wild. Oh, hunt the net. Back paddle. Our net just sank to the bottom of Shade Lake, so it's, uh, if we land any good, if we get any good fish, it's gonna be a heck of a lot harder to land them now. Portage number five. This is the 732 meter into, where does it go? Gray Lake. It's one of the tougher ones to follow, pretty overgrown and uh, has some blowdown on it too. And we miscounted, there are actually 10 ports today, so four more to go after this. We just finished the port, loaded up the canoe, got on the water. Realized things weren't looking right. GPS said we were on the lake that we started on from the port. The one that I said was overgrown and confusing. And we ended up somehow portaging from one lake back to the same lake. There are two takeouts and two trails leading like a fork into the next lake. We took both of the forks. We connected the forks and this the prong. So we just uh, made ourselves do one of the hardest ports of the trip twice. This is where we were supposed to go. We looked at it and then saw the other fork in the trail and just started taking that. Went on blind faith without even checking the GPS. 
Portage is like the Bermuda Triangle. We, we feel like we're doing a U, but it's somehow the correct Portage. Just, I don't know, blowing our minds. We don't even understand it fully. Back through the tangle for the sixth time. We're on Gray Lake. It kind of feels like a storm might be blowing through, which is semi-accurate with our week old forecast. Uh, the forecast called for a thunderstorm tomorrow morning, but we might get some tonight. We've got a couple more ports and uh, hopefully we'll be able to end the day before too long and set up camp before the storm does come in. But yeah, it's been a frustrating day. We're gassed. I think we're gonna stop on this next lake. Yum yum lake. We're just dripping with sweat after that one. And we need to set up camp here because we're done. So hopefully we find a good site soon. Thankfully found a site quickly, but uh, the rain's coming on. It's starting to spit now and the wind is picking up. It feels like a good storm. So we're gonna set up right away. So it was still an 11 hour day. Yep. Thank you. Huh. Rain held off and we, we were able to make some dinner. Chili. Much appreciated. That's it for us today. Hard earned. Mm -hmm. Our feet are just killing. Our bodies are tired. It's been nine to... <coughs> 11 hour days every day and it has just taken its toll. I don't even know how many portages that we've done, but So many. Anyway, we gotta start taking it easier and get back to pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of pain today. Not the whole trip, just mm -hmm. today. It's been a great trip. Today's the hardest day. I started with uh, the main camera acting up a little bit. Yeah, we don't know if this main camera is gonna work. It's working at the moment, but compromises just puts into question our ability to use it which is too bad and then the net that I dropped my wrist is acting up in the portage yeah just a an aggravating day yeah it's all right it's over mm -hmm. we're still together <laughs> right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you owe me a net well oh, I will buy you any net that you want just bought it too I know Got our flies really tight to the hammocks tonight, just in case it downpours. But we're all set, we're gonna get in here, call it a day. I was kicking my feet up in the hammock, but I got a real hunger. So I'm looking for a fish to eat for di Whoa, that one, can't eat four inch bass anyway. No luck, but tomorrow I'm eating a fish. That's for sure, unless it's pouring all day. That ended up being a, a long night with a big thunderstorm. Our tarps have this seam here and it's saturated and was dripping through onto us. There's nothing we can do about it. So, like our, our stuff's all damp now from being dripped on. We tried to lay down clothing to capture the dripping, but like you can see, you see it's all damp spots everywhere. Good news is the rain came overnight and now it looks like we can probably travel without rain for a little while anyway. It looks pretty nice out. Well, at least it seems like the land really needed the water here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully a forest fire wasn't started because it was so dry. Mm -hmm. We 
got a couple special breakfasts to break up the monotony of oats. This is uh, huevos rancheros. Mm -hmm. That's a lot better than oats. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Down sleeping bags are really not an ideal thing to get wet. So hopefully the sun stays reasonably strong today. <laughs> so rather than pack up wet and do a couple ports into the next lake, um, we're just going to call this a, a full rest day, really rest our bodies. That's something, anything but bass would be great. It's a bit of weight to it, it's probably good enough size to eat. Oh, it's a pike. It's a pike, it's a nice size eating pike. Perfect, oh. But now I gotta keep this pinned with barbless hooks and land it without a net. The only way I'm gonna be able to do that is to play it out. Oh, and he's not well hooked. The net, not having the net is just a killer for landing fish, especially with barbless. We always use barbless hooks now, but it's required in Quetico and there's also no live bait permitted, even if you catch it in the park. Probably a big part of the reason why the fishing is what it is. There it goes. Got a smallie on, and it just did one of the best jumps of the trip. It was like two feet out of the air. And a bass would be a lot easier to land without a net because I can lip it. But, oh, just jumped in the boat. When they want to jump, that's the easiest way for them to spit the hook because you'll lose tension more likely when they're in the air. So you want to like pull down and away rather than up if they're going to jump because pulling up will just help them jump and spit the hook. There. Yep, that's the nicest small of the trip. Leave its body weight in the water. I'm going to let it go. It's a nice size spawner. I try not to keep the big fish. I'm, it's still early. We have all day, so I'll just have to get something else. And it's my last choice of species here, so. Got a big smallie on. This is probably the biggest of the trip again. Holy cow! <laughs> Look at that smallie! <laughs> That's huge. That is a huge smallmouth. Oh. oh, I hate keeping big fish. I really do. The longer you think about it, the more you want to release them. It's hard. It's better just to do it quick. Just keeping them in the water here while I think about it. I'm gonna keep them. I'm gonna keep them. Okay, I'm gonna dispatch them now. So we've got some powdered milk here that Erin had for her coffee. I'm gonna soak them in it just for a little bit to help cut the fishiness. And I chunked it up so it's just easier to manage in the pan. What to boil up? I made some cedar tea. I've been feeling a bit uh, off today, just I think fatigued, so. Cedar tea's got a lot of vitamins in it, particularly vitamin C. Thought it wouldn't hurt. It's pretty clear. It doesn't look like there's much going on in there, but it's surprisingly tasty. It's a bit zesty. spicy almost. Yeah, zesty, zesty yeah. yeah. It's quite enjoyable. Can I have some? Yeah, you Too should hot? probably let it cool though. <laughs> <laughs> Finally a fish fry. Holy. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's definitely a lesser eating fish versus pike, walleye, 
trout. But much needed and appreciated. You want some? I will try a piece. Aaron's not a seafood eater, so this isn't too fishy. I think I cut the fishing is pretty well. I made it into small bits and blackened it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's fine. Mm -hmm. Probably good for me. What are we having? Pesto? Mm-hmm. Hmm. This could go in pesto. I don't want it in pesto. <laughs> pretty nice temperature though. Yeah, the temperature is good. It's refreshing. I didn't notice it because of all the slime. <laughs> It's not a bad one. Jeez. Good fight and tight. Gotta be one of the hardest fighting pike for its size that I've ever had. Yes. Okay. Not a bad pike at all. Maybe so. oh. Got our stuff drying out. Stuff's all over the place. We're taking stock of what's left. Snack bag. Dehydrated bag. Chili, burrito mix. Uh, what else? Curry, etc. It's crazy how calm and quiet it is right now. This rest day has been good. We needed it, but uh, I'm antsy. I'm ready to get going first thing in the morning. Morning number nine, right? Yep. Nine. And uh, ninth morning, we're waking up with beautiful conditions. <clears throat> Can't talk yet. <laughs> Beautiful conditions. Mm -hmm. The moon was extremely bright last night as well. It was casting shadows. It's getting super lucky. The first two days of this trip were a lot different. The route was clearer and easier. We saw a number of parties, but since day two, we haven't seen anyone and the route's been more rugged for sure. Nice port. Yeah, it is. We're heading for the old growth pine of McNeese Lake. Already seeing some big ones though. On Shan Walsh Lake. Hooked into something with some weight. I'm betting it's a good sized pike again. It's not a smallie. There's some weight there. It's either a good pike or a good walleye. Oh. This could be sizable. John's hooked oh. into something nice. Oh, it's a nice lake trout. Whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. look at this. Finally, lake trout. I didn't even think this lake was listed as having lake trout. I'm not keeping this one. It's a good five pounder. This is too good of a spawner to keep. This is gonna be a little fight. This is gonna take a little while. There it goes. Oh yeah, it's a nice lake trout. Very nice. I'll return them really quickly because warm water is very hard on them. Caught it on the same lure I got the big pike on. Just a little, what is it? Um, it's just Berkeley Flicker Shad. Deep, I believe. Deep version. Which is not that deep. It runs like max 10 feet, probably more like six to eight. We're coming into what is supposed to be an old growth forest, but it looks like there's been a fire in the last five to 10 years. But some of the white pine have survived. There's actually a decent amount of survivor trees. So 
we're hoping to find similar results once we get into McNeese and maybe there'll be some of the big old growth pines left. It's a pretty spectacular sight though. Lots of big ones left. It's even more dramatic seeing them amongst all the small stuff in the fire. So here's a good size one. Survived, it's fine. Its neighbor was not so lucky. And it's looming so ominously, like it even angles up there. And that is a tall tree. It's got a big crack in it. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's got a huge crack in it. That's gonna come down like thunder someday soon. Yeah. One of the things that's amazing about old growth forests, and I've heard, but I've never seen in person, is that fires can rip through them and the oldest trees and the tallest are actually so large that they'll survive the fire because all their branches are above where the rest of the fire is burning. And that appears to be what happened here and it's pretty phenomenal to see just these giants that survived the destruction that took the rest of the forest. Just got the food bag to a food barrel to a point where it's light enough. Here, hon. Oops. To uh, to single carry, but I tweaked my back pulling the packs out of the canoe in the last port. It's gonna take a row back um, and hopefully loosen it up because we have one of the tougher ports coming up out of McNeese Lake. McNeese is a really nice lake, good lake trout potential, but. We gotta get going, it's looking pretty overcast and we definitely don't wanna do this tough portage in the rain and in wet slippery conditions on the rocks. Uh, we could barely see the takeout with this uprooted tree, but that's the trail right beside it. My back is, is feeling a little better with the pills, um, but still pretty, pretty tweaked. So we have to double carry, it's okay. trail's rough, flow down, and it's pretty thick with all the new growth. Some huge pines still along the way. It's a big one. Hey! -o. Aaron just wiped out coming down this hill. She's taking some time to let the shock wear off. She slammed into this little tree. Came down hard on my ankle. feeling uh, uh, I hope it's just rolled a bit maybe we can wrap it and support it yeah it was a really awkward fall like you were face planted almost yeah with the barrel on your back here comes the rain 
Looks like we're in for a good one. I'll quadruple carry if it, if needed. We have to. Yeah. You can move it, okay? Yeah, that's movement there. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. man, that's a relief. Yeah. That you was... were in a lot of pain initially. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking we have like minimum. If we took the shortest route, 15 to 20 ports to get out of here. Yeah. I was thinking about the SOS button. If like that thought was running my, through my head, you were, you looked like you were in agony. That hurt. Okay. Let's try and take a couple steps. All right. Nice and easy. Okay. Yeah, I think it'll be okay. Shoot. I mean, I don't want you to do anything with it, but... Yeah. No, I'll just take it. I think it's okay. Honestly, I think I stepped and it rolled, but I think that was just oh, the initial pain. It seems okay. Okay. Just take it nice and slow. Alright. Okay. We can stop any time. We can stop on the next lake if we need to. Yeah. That was scary. Sorry. That is a relief. Yeah, I know. I was seriously worried it was broken because yeah. it Give looked too, bent and... Oh, yeah. Jeez. How's it feeling? Sore, but okay. okay. I can definitely feel it. I feel it in my knee a bit too. It, it's manageable for sure. Okay. We can definitely continue our trip. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. Still the second load to go. Just heard thunder as we approach too. Man. We're in for it today. One point one kilometers. Aaron rolls her ankle, I tweak my back, it starts raining. Here's a little thunder. <laughs> Watch this cut log again here. Yeah, okay. Good job, hun. It was by far the worst port of the trip. It was over a kilometer and the under brush was so overgrown. It was, you couldn't see any, your step. Um, it wasn't steep or anything, but it was just terrible. And then yeah. I rolled my ankle halfway yeah. through the first carry. It started raining right as you rolled your ankle. So it, it wasn't the most strenuous portage. I'd say the 1200 into McEwen was worse. Yeah. But it was the most unpleasant. It was the worst. For sure. If it was, if the underbrush was cleared, it would be okay, but. Yep. Oh. At least it stopped raining. But it stopped raining, and that should be, that's our last port over a kilometer for the trip. So, um, hopefully it's the worst one. <laughs> Let's get moving. Let's do it. The thunder, I don't know if you can hear that, is off in the distance, so we're going to paddle. If it gets close, if we see lightning, then we'll have to pull over. It was one of those rare times on the trip where you actually kind of miss home. It doesn't happen to me a ton, but right now I wouldn't be, mind being cuddled up in bed with my cat, toothless, and a big plate of nachos. What about Alfred? Well, Alfie's not as cuddly, but he can hang out. And watch hockey playoffs. I was gonna say hockey playoffs. Yeah, doesn't happen often, but every once in a while you miss home. I miss the cat cuddles the most. And nachos, actually. Biting the bullet and pulling out our rain jackets here. Before we get too cold. Yep. We're on Kashapiwi Lake. The rain stopped and the winds calmed down. Um, on the right of us, there's still a continuation of, I think, the same burn from McNeese. And then on the left, there's these stunning cliffs all along. So, quite a scenic lake. I'm happy we've been able to enjoy it a bit without the rain. Yep. 
Yeah, I think we got it. Oh yeah. Just cleared that log, which is good because we're in no mood for a lift over right now. It's just been raining off and on all day. We're just trying to make progress and get to our planned lake, which is Sark Lake. It's like a drug. <laughs> no matter what situation you're in. It's such a pick me up. Mm -hmm. It's such a little slice of heaven. More than any of the chocolates. Mm -hmm. More than any of the treats. Something dead here. Looks like a beaver, maybe. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yikes. Made it to Sark Lake. <laughs> yeah, it's looking pretty good right now. Yeah. We just want to get a raging fire going. It took and call it a, day. a ton out of us to get here. But mm -hmm. we're here. And ow, we're gonna get a fire going. Camp set up hopefully in a break and rain and uh, enjoy yeah. the evening. As we stepped here, I said, oh it looks pretty nice. Like it's not it's not as daunting. And then this big crack of thunder, so huh. we'll see. I don't think we're done with the rain yet. Nah. First cast off of Sark. And I got this guy. That was a pretty largey. good size. Yeah, it's a largemouth. Nice. Nice largey. Nice. Very nice. Literally, Lure hardly hit the uh, oh. hit the water and he jumped on it. Throw it back yeah, in. Yeah, he blew up on it. Did yeah. It right on the surface. That's a good sign. Pretty sweet sight here. All these big erratics all over. Small island. Well, good size island. The last of the M&Ms. One kilogram of M&Ms. My mouth's just watering thinking about it. Yes. That feels yes. so good. We should check out my ankle soon too. Yeah, let's have a look. Okay. It's not, uh, it's not there, like but it's golf not. balls. Yeah. That's good. It's just tender. Yeah, and see, you can see it's purple. Oh, yep. It's bruising, but it's not. That's good. That's overall, bigger. Yeah. overall, all things considered, considering Oof. how I thought it looked at first, yeah, oh, considering how it felt at first. Really good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a relief. Mm. It still sucks, though. It's still painful every step. Yep. How's that? Lovely. So I scrubbed it with soap to try and clear off the oil, but then you also have to scrub it with like a little rag. You gotta treat it like grease. Um, if you're trying to get grease off from the garage or something, you got to really rub it off with um, friction. So I did that, but uh, who knows where I've spread it. The Urushal, the oil off the poison ivy plant. It's small right now, but I've had this explode. Uh, so I'm 
trying to be super careful. Hopefully that's it. If that is, that's fine. Um, it actually said in a pamphlet that there was poison ivy on that last portage we did into Sark Lake here. I don't know how long it takes for poison ivy to develop, but uh, if it was this fast, then maybe I got it there. We stayed on the trail, except I went down to the creek to get a shot. It might have been in there. I should have been looking. But. We're getting hit by huge gusts of wind. We chose the leeward side of the island when we got here. It's now the windblown side. So we battened down the hatches, put rocks on our, on our guy lines. I hope it's gonna hold up. If a big wind, uh, if a big rain blows in here, we're gonna be in trouble. Just blew my hat off my head. Ah, a new day. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a good one. You can see these little bits of poison ivy, small patches thankfully are kind of bubbling yellow. Maybe you can see that. But uh, it didn't explode overnight so that's great news. And we had such a perfect day. We're feeling a lot less battered than yesterday. We're just starting our day on Sark Lake which is a really nice lake. That's where we spent the night last night and this morning feels like a much better day than yesterday. We're starting the day with a little bit of a tailwind and a beautiful clear sky. Aaron's got a nice large mouth on. Lip it, lip it, lip it. I'm trying, I'm trying. Come, come, yep. Right on. Boom. Nice large, you hold it back a little further. Nice fish. Almost at the end of Sark Lake, which as usual has been one of my favorites. <laughs> Every new lake we get to almost. But no, this one really was special. Top five for sure. We're in Cuddy Lake now, and the wind has picked up and it's turned against us. And the gray clouds are moving in. Whoop, getting hit. Uh, and we're really missing the weather forecast at this point in the trip. It's tough not knowing, having a clue what, what the weather's gonna bring. A little lunch walleye maybe. Cheek meat. Red-tailed hawk, eh? For me? You hear the red-tailed hawk? No. I have some walleye wings too. Lots of nice meat in there. Between the fins, pectoral fins. Seasoning. Tex Mex again. Curry, big bucket of it. Walleye. I have these wings now, walleye wings. 
Andrea. Oh yeah! Wow, we're flying! This is crazy, this tailwind is so strong it's almost hard to control. It's a, a solid 20 kilometer an hour wind, probably gusting to 40, maybe even 50 clicks. We are flying. Like someone that was here before us was using some cattails to do some weaving. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Pretty solid. Yeah. Interesting. We are windbound on Baird Lake. Luckily, it's only a two kilometer paddle and 60 meter port from our intended spot for the day, so we're not too far behind. No. Just stopping a little early to save our bodies. Might as well just tackle the two kilometers we intended on covering today, tomorrow morning. Oh, there goes the weave. Goodbye. Okay, stop. Holy cow. Yep. It was nice when it was tailwind. Yeah. <laughs> chocolate, getting everything dry and freshened a little bit. Feeling really good here. Here's ankle number one. And then look at ankle number two. Look at that. Oh. It's a monster. That's brutal. Love this site on Baird Lake and really glad we stopped. The wind is insane. Got nice jumping rocks here. Our hammocks are like parachutes right now. Well, that smells good. Look at that. For me. Cheesy Bannock chili biscuits. Day 10 and that's a good meal. Oh wow, look above us, the Milky Way is coming into it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wow, it's a good night. First portage of the day. We might be doing eight today.
beautiful wetland. Nice pitcher plant flowers, I guess. They're coming out of pitcher plants. Oh, there's the wasp. I see him. We're on Cuddy Creek and there's lily pads everywhere. It's quite beautiful, but they actually make the paddling kind of difficult. It feels like you're paddling through molasses. They're so thick. It's crazy. Spat out a crayfish. Yep. Good size. This dragonfly just landed on Aaron's finger and was mowing on a nice, was it a stable fly? Yeah, he had a big stable fly in his mouth. He just devoured. Which have been pestering us. Yeah. They've actually been the worst bug here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just good. <laughs> I love dragonflies. <laughs> Trippy though. Hi. We got a portage to do, otherwise I'd hang out with you all day. Okay, bye. You know something to leave. <laughs> He's like, portage, nope. <laughs> Noped out of that one real quick. <laughs> Finished portage four out of eight for the day. We got a headwind. Some fresh poof right there. Sorry. But it's a beautiful day. <laughs> yeah. Not there, hun. It's supposed to dig a hole. Beautiful day and spirits are high. Nice campsite on this blustery day. Got lunch going. Canoe over there. It is super windy again. We're on Nan Lake now. We've done five of our portages for the day, but we're still fighting a headwind. It's pretty nasty at times. Just finished portage number five. Right? Number six. That was six? six. Okay, number six out of nine. I thought we had eight. We have nine today because we stopped one short yesterday. And this one is just get in the pond and then go over there. <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> they're short. Unload again. Yeah. Oh. It's okay. It's still a good day. Yeah, it is. It's been really pleasant. Yeah. This huge pine snapped off at some point. Just imagine that crashing down. That would sound and look incredible. That'd be crazy. It's huge. Huge. I always find it crazy when they snap halfway up like that too. Yeah. Cool. Number nine. Last one. 536 meters into Fred Lake. Welcome to Fred Lake. Oh yeah. Beautiful sand. Pretty choppy out there.
Well, that's it for today. We're windbound here. We wanted to get about six kilometers further on this lake and the next lake, but uh, the wind's just too strong. It's actually a little dangerous. So we'll just wake up early tomorrow morning and make it up then. Gonna be home for the night. Aaron just put on a, in a bench. She's got tea going. Not a bad place to spend the night. We're pretty cozy here in the moss, ready for bed, even though we just had dinner. I've got my tarp rigged up with a stick just to keep it up, keep my view open, like so. Oh. Up at 5 a.m. this morning to try and beat the wind, which has been extremely strong the last two days, so. Uh, we got across Sturgeon Lake today, which is a big one, and uh, I don't want to get hung up again waiting for the wind, but it's uh, super calm now, so if we get on our way, I think we'll be fine. It is 5.57, we bit, beat the 6 a.m. buzzer. <laughs> oh, let's do that one again. It's 5.57, we beat the 6 a.m. buzzer. We're gonna get out here before the wind picks up, do some trolling and trying to get across these big lakes. Say something about the erratic. No. <laughs> this is a big stone. <laughs> Left here by the glacier. It has poop on oh, top. Look at the sun. It's just hitting the top of it. It's magic. Okay. It's magic. <laughs> Look at this erratic, it's massive. And the sun's just hitting it. Erin's not that impressed, I'm pretty impressed. She didn't want to wait two minutes for the sun to hit the top of it. We do need to get going, but it's pretty amazing. You can still see the erratic. Look at that big white dot. We've been on Sturgeon Lake for about an hour now, paddling to somewhere we can eat lunch before the portage. And there's not a breeze. We woke up early, trying to beat the wind on one of the biggest lakes in the park, and it is flat calm still. It's uh, 8.09 now. So yeah, we've been paddling for two hours, and not a breeze. It's nice though. ran into a couple of guys on the portage into Lonely Lake. First people we've seen since day two, it's now day 12. And they are from Toronto and they told me that the leaves are out already. 
didn't even make it to the first round. And that is why I don't hold off camping plans for the Leafs anymore. They're junk. We just ran into another party on Lonely Lake here, uh, ironically, and we forgot to ask them for a weather forecast. For days we've been hoping we'd run into someone who could tell us an updated weather forecast, and then we ran into them and completely forgot. <laughs> Stopped for lunch here and we're having these potato pancakes from Germany, I think. 15 Kartoffel Puffer by Kartoffel Land. Anyway, they should be good with chili. The poison ivy seems pretty contained, thankfully. It's not moving, it's still very itchy. That one popped yesterday and it oozed a little. I tried to get it, but it made another little bubble there. Smaller one, but I think it'll be fine. Yeah, they're just hash browns, eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Potato pancakes. Mistranslation. <laughs> Like a hash brown. Mm -hmm. It's good. Meaty bass. Oh, he got free. Uh. Checks. Nope, he didn't. What? Nope, he didn't. Yeah. He just came back for more. Or one of his buddies did. Yeah. <laughs> it's only one o'clock, but we're calling it a day here on Walter Lake. We've still been going for seven hours because we woke up early. Pretty nice camp here on Walter Lake. Didn't get any bites when we wanted it for dinner, but we got plenty of food left. Nice evening. Erin just dropped off an antihistamine for me for the poison ivy, and then she brought me a little present. She whittled me a little paddle. Very sweet. Uh, it's, uh, it's early, it's like 8 o'clock, but we're hitting the hay to wake up at 5. We got a good early start tomorrow because we want to put in a big day. A, big, a pretty solid day. On the water in good time again today. We're we got to do uh, two kilometers of ports today. Um, 
good chunk of which we want to single carry for the first time all trip. We intended on single carrying more on this trip, but the injuries prevented that from happening. It's just we didn't want to put extra weight on injured bodies. So we took it the long way by double carrying. But uh, two kilometers seems like a lot to portage right now with uh, the state of our bodies. We're just worn down. But if we get these done today, then that leaves only one more portage for the entire trip. And that's the one back to the car. So it'll feel pretty amazing to get those done. But a lot of portages on the trip. I have no idea how many. Dozens and dozens. So here's our whole kit, fishing tackle box, pack, tripod, two rods, camera bag, food barrel, two paddles plus a backup, two life jackets, and a little day bag, plus the canoe with two trolling mounts and uh, one camera mount. So I'll be taking the canoe with the food barrel. We can now fit the camera bag inside of the food barrel, but then Aaron's gonna have to take everything else pretty much. So we'll both have our hands full here. It's funny, we're just single carrying now. We intended on single carrying for the back two thirds of the trip. Yeah. But it just didn't happen. Self-preservation was the goal instead. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Se a couple of uh, 750 meter portages, nothing too bad. Mm. Yeah. It's mm. Okay. You all right? I got it. Can you hold it from the bottom so I can... Yep. How's it feel? Uh, like a burden. <laughs> oh. Oh. How'd that feel? <laughs> Burn my shoulders, but otherwise it's doable. You? Uh, about the same. Burn my lower back, but... It's nice not to have to go back. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, that was good. What is it? Yes. Oh, it's a little walleye. Oh. Come here. Now when you grab that. There you go. Jesse Lake is a pretty nice one. We've got the wind kind of with us right now, but uh, we're going to be turning into it later today and it really might uh, foil our progress. We just finished two 750 meter ports that we single carried for the first time on this trip. And it was tough, but now um, I much prefer the single carry. And now that we've done it, it makes me never want to go back to a double carry yeah. ever again. We're single carrying the last two. Yeah, we got two more left on this trip and we decided to single carry them. All right, we're on Pickerel Lake, back where we started. It is a long lake and we have about 25 kilometers to cover on it, which we're gonna do over today and tomorrow. But we're feeling great. We can practically taste the beer and nachos and see the hockey night in Canada before our own eyes right now. Been an awesome trip, but we're missing home too. The distance we need to cover on across Pickerel Lake is all, almost all to the east. And uh, yeah, there's a strong east wind today, which is the least common wind direction too. So it's a bit of a bummer, but uh, we've had pretty good luck with the wind this trip. Stopped here on Pickerel Lake for lunch. One more curry meal probably the sixth fifth or sixth time we've had it uh, and yeah we're so we're ahead of schedule we could have just lingered but it just wasn't really a sense of purpose in that you know like you're just kind of killing time we're both almost on our books like kind of windy if you want to go fishing on your own so we're content we're content with the trip and uh, this is gonna be our last night just gonna head home have a good weekend at home before we uh, have to head back to work We got to camp, finally pushed through the wind to uh, make enough progress to feel satisfied with it. Got the canoe well away from the water with all the wind. 
and a nice red pine site for our last night. It's hard to believe. We're no longer rationing, so whatever's in the food barrel, we can have anything we like. We're having some chocolate, we've got pineapple. There's not a lot else. <laughs> What would be your perfect meal right now? Nachos! That's it? Anything else? Beer! Yep. Sounds right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With a milkshake. Mm. Chocolate. <laughs> yeah. That's been our craving. All mine for most of the trip, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beer, pizza, nachos. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Hopefully this wind isn't blowing anything in too serious. We're not looking for a, a crazy thunderstorm to send us out. Oh, I'm gonna miss this. You little creep. Get out of here. <laughs> What a cutie. So our final meal that we need to cook tomorrow, we're just gonna do a quick one. Eat the last of our multivitamins, all the cheese, shredded cheddar and Parmesan. That can go. All of our dehydrated stuff is in there. Mushrooms, spinach, onions, bell peppers, a little salt, a little pepper, a little sriracha. It's gonna be a really good sausage pasta. That's a meal. This is our final night out here in Quetico on our two week trip. It's been a really amazing experience and uh, being out here has been really fun for me. I grew up, my parents took me camping here all the time and uh, it really had me reflecting on those times of being a kid and being out here with my family and I just wanted to take a minute actually and thank both my parents, Barb and Bill, um, for bringing me out here and, and instilling that love of outdoors in me and also for being um, just such an inspiration. Both my parents are amazing travelers and adventurers and uh, they're a big uh, inspiration to me on a daily basis. So. Thanks guys, love you, and uh, yeah, we've had a great time. Finished my book, it's a beautifully written one. It's a good chapter, The Way of a Canoe. There is a satisfaction in reaching some point on the map, in spite of the wind and weather, and keeping a rendezvous with some campsite that in the morning seemed impossible of, of achievement. In a canoe, the battle is yours and yours alone. It is your muscle and sinew, your wit and courage against the primitive forces of the storm. That is why when after a day of battle, your tent is pitched at last in the lee of some sheltering cliff, a canoe up safe and dry, and supper underway, 
there is an exaltation that only canoe men know. There's a ridiculous thunderstorm going on right now. Like five, several lightning strikes per second, non-stop. Seems to be staying on the horizon, but the rain has started, so maybe it's coming. Hey, hon. Yeah. Have you been awake for this? Yeah. It's insane, eh? Yeah. I I don't remember ever seeing so much lightning. It's so much. Non-stop. It's pretty cool, eh? Yeah, I just hope it doesn't get too close. Right now it's on the horizon. Yeah. Like someone's firing a cannon. Pretty crazy storm going on out there right now. Heavy rain, lots of lightning, loud thunder. Oh my. Pretty happy to be off the ground in my hammock tonight. The storm's wild. I don't even know if you can hear me over the rain. There's a purple hue to the light when the lightning strikes big. It's, it's really quite ominous. I hope this isn't going to get bad. Yeah, I got a bit damp. You? Uh, not too bad. Wind is picking up big time already, so we gotta go. Wow. Wind is already whipping against us. Back to back east winds, which should be pretty rare. Fighting against us on Pickerel Lake as we exit. I'm so glad we dug in yesterday and kept going and fighting the wind to uh, to make today as short as possible. It's already going to be plenty of work. What time is it? 7.15. Slept in a little bit. We'll make it. But at least we're packing up not in the rain. Yeah. For the 13th time out of 13 on this trip. Yeah. Wind. Yeah. <laughs> That's a crazy storm. Yeah, absolutely wild. Yeah. I was just telling Aaron, I've never seen lightning that frequent. Oh, right. There were thousands was, of yeah. lightning uh, flashes. I, I didn't see any chain lightning. I just saw the the flash. Mm -hmm. It was something. Yeah. It was close for a while. There's some noisy. Yeah, we yeah. Saying it sounded like cannons. Yeah. <laughs> and after knowing that like some a family was hit by lightning on this lake yeah. last month yeah. on an island. That's yeah, kind of <laughs> crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh that boy. A good one. Yeah. All right. Well, All let's right, get going. Car and get some munchies. <laughs> yeah. Final pack up of the trip. I'm not going to miss this. No. Thir 13 nights. 14, 14 days. Yep. We've had enough of packing that up. We're paddling away from our final site for this trip, and we actually have a tailwind for the last couple kilometers. Yeah, the wind changed from east to southwest in the time that we were packing up. So, we're heading home. Packed up and heading out, end of two weeks. I think I said this before, but it felt like a long time, but it flew by at the same time. Like thinking about launching here at Stanton Bay two weeks ago, it's so hard to believe. Yeah, it's, it's surreal. All right, final port. Thank you.
She starts. Got a few snacks. No one broke in and stole them. Thank you, next. On to the next trip. Thank you, Quetico, though. Do you want M&M's or do you want munchies? I would like both. <laughs> let's get the munchies. We've had M&M's. All right, let's have at the munchies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, pretzels. Quickly, yeah, eat all the pretzels. Eat oh, those crap, stupid crap. pretzels. That one's gonna burst into flames last. Last. It will okay. last the longest without oh, burning. Okay. We're currently putting things in the coals and seeing, um, betting on who, which one will last longer. No uh, considerations, just pure glory for the victory. There are a lot of little things like this that don't get captured. Hummingbirds we saw on this trip. Um, the sp a spider, a big spider, was crawling across the water toward our canoe as like a. a life raft out in the lake and it wasn't going to make it but then it spewed out a spider web into Aaron's face <laughs> yeah. and tried to like and get up there but we got away it was such a big spider that we felt like I almost I thought it was a little oh, rodent simultaneous combustion oh my goodness it's a, it's a draw oh. anyway I thought it was a rodent but it was actually a rat or a, a spider running across the water it was horrible. That was funny. <laughs> I uh, any other moments? Yeah, I caught a fish, and when I put my oh. paddle behind me, dropped it. So the, dropped your paddle in the water. Paddle's floating away, but that's fine. We'll get it. I'm reeling in the fish, and it crosses the paddle about a couple feet past it, and then it spits the hook, and my line wraps perfectly lassoes my paddle, so I could reel it in. Couldn't do it again no. in a million years. It was hilarious. So tomorrow is two weeks here. Uh, what were your highlights and your lowest moments? Maybe two, two of each or so. Two of each. One of the highlights was the snapping turtle. That was a really cool encounter. Um, he just, I think he'd been fed before probably off the rock, but he came up and investigated us and we had a pretty good interaction with him. That was fun. Oh, and so my other highlight, I would say would just be, um, like certain times, like our the afternoon on Baird Island, that was really enjoyable. Just that experience, just those certain moments where it just felt really good. Like our rest day, a really yeah, like a really like, enjoyable times. You like the really restful times. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But there's just to me, though, like there's kind of some uh, moments where it just felt really like in the moment. I guess mm -hmm. low lights would be. Day seven and nine, so dropping the net was rough. Uh, uh, that just said, turned into a really rough day. Yeah. That was day seven, and then day nine was when I rolled my ankle. That was that was a rough one. Halfway through that really tough port, and on a day with a lot of ports. Yeah, those are my two. Yeah. My highlights are uh, Louisa Falls. Great. That was awesome. Just a magical spot. And then maybe the pike was the biggest fish. That was nice. Or the old growth pine as well. Yeah, yeah. That was fantastic. Uh, that's what comes to mind immediately. And then the lowest moments were having my main camera malfunction. Uh, that was super disappointing. It was the worst timing for it to happen on this longest trip of our, our lives so far. Uh, so I was pretty bummed about that for quite a while. Um, and then right after, so that morning I, I discovered that my, my main camera wasn't working well. That is also the morning that Aaron dropped the net and we got turned around on a long portage. That was, that was the lowest. And then we got into camp and, uh, and there was a thunderstorm and it was just kind of a stressful, exhausting day. Those would be mine. So I made a special list before this trip um, for items that would be especially necessary on a long trip. Lip balm with some SPF, yes, we needed that. Laxative, uh, you wouldn't want your trip to be stopped by um, not being able to go. We didn't need them, but it's good to have. Rash cream, zinc oxide cream. Uh, we used it 
our inner thighs were chafing a little initially and armpits um, and we used it, worked well. Extra sunglasses, mm. didn't need it, but you would hate to be like if a, one of our, us lost our sunglasses on day two, to be 12, 13 more days without sunglasses in this broad daylight be not good for your corneas if nothing else clean clothes and chips in the car yes that'll be nice when we get back okay so laxatives were really i think but the again, only, those are, it's but, like the bear yeah, spray yeah. you don't need it but yeah. you still don't leave it behind exactly you bring it with you hoping not to need it